welcome to the second day of the swimming knowledge series for swimmers and parents which is organized by the rainbow swimming academy first uh, before we start i would like to request everyone other than the speakers of course to switch off their video modes so that would help us with the bandwidth or let's say the connectivity and uh, it will also make it easier for the presenter to present without any disturbances also i would like to uh, remind everyone all participants to use the chat box uh, for questions only if you have a question please uh, drop your question on the chat box as much as we would like to encourage many questions um please note we will discuss only two questions one or two questions from each participant but it doesn't mean that you shouldn't uh, drop in questions if you do have uh, whichever questions which are not addressed will be sent via text format within the next few days also uh, this is uh, for the swimmers and the parents who are listening in just please note that you will uh, there might like when the presentations are going on there might be certain technical terms there are there might be certain difficult words that doesn't mean that you should be discouraged uh, of it just keep on listening and try and grasp what is said and if you have any questions as 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 i said before you can just ask us there's no uh, problem at all now i would like to invite uh, coach julian bowling to speak a few words uh, before we commence on the lectures sir julia thank you kasun uh, and a very good evening to all our listeners swimmers parents from different clubs schools we are a big family and it's great and to be honest i was quite thrilled yesterday that what happened simply what happened and uh, we the swimmers participated in asking questions and yeah feel free to i heard this once they said the stupidest question you can ask is no question at all the stupidest question you can ask is no question at all if you don't ask a question so any question is a good question and always remember the question the thought that you have many other people many other swimmers in this instance will be thinking ah might be thinking the same thing so if you ask a question you know what you are helping a lot of other people go for it don't be ashamed but like i said we'll try and answer only one or two questions per swimmer and if you have much more questions we can we will always write back by text and uh, we'll see to that okay so from yesterday in brief in brief in short um i learned a lot um every time i hear about technique i get something new um I've been coaching for some time but I'm always learning and what fantastic two presentations we had yesterday uh, by coach uh, Kanifer and um, Nimesh uh the backstroke and the freestyle Nimesh and Sachel Nimesh and Sorry Kanifer is coming now preempted Sachel Thank you and um, well Kanifer is going to be good too uh, so what i learned yesterday and I, i i this is what i like i'd like that what coach kasun said your 75 meter speed if you do a kick at some for 75 meters that should be as fast as your 100 meter freestyle time something i think we should challenge ourselves and see how fast we are some people are good kickers some people are weak kickers somebody asked me the question yesterday about the para the disabled athletes the differently able athletes and i told you about the swimmer that i was able to coach priyadarshana who went to the paralympics he swam a 58 for 100 freestyle one six i think 100 backstroke and we had another boy in our team who was a national record holder in the 100 meter freestyle what a super kick in the race but when he does his own freestyle kicking guess who was faster Tridarshana, the disabled swimmer, the differently able swimmer, or Jamal, who is 100 meter record holder. Believe it or not, Tridarshana was faster. So sometimes we can be, may not be the fastest kicker, but we must. Jamal used to use his legs a lot, so it's always not that it will contribute 30 percent of your speed, but to keep that balance, keep that movement going, to connect the body, the kicks are important. 
Your eight one hundreds kick, I think young swimmers can go up to probably four hundred, six hundred, I don't know. Okay. We must do a lot of kicking on the clock. Um uh, was Kasun, Coach Kasun said that water is heavier. Does anyone remember how much heavier it is compared to, I know you all can't speak out. You should have a little quiz at the end of this, huh? Who knows? Uh, 700 times heavier water is. That's how difficult swimming is because when you go against water, you're going against a lot more resistance. So that's why technique is more important. Think about the Formula One cars, you know, the racing cars. They spend millions and millions and millions of dollars trying to be streamlined to go through the air. Now in swimming, the resistance is more. We got to actually work more, but yes, we are not going to spend the millions, but we are going to use our mind, concentrate on technique and really work on it. And we are going to improve a lot more. What was the percentage? If you improve 10% of your stroke, your times are bound to improve by 10%. Now don't go to your coach and say, hey coach, I want to work on technique only and not my fitness. That's not going to help. You've got to do your fitness, but with your fitness, if you improve your technique, you'll have a proportionate amount of speed that you will generate. I like the word boiling water was used for backstroke and freestyle. Think about that backstroke, not an easy kick, uh, stroke where you can kick. Work on that boiling water. So I like that one, the fact to use that word boiling water for both strokes. Um, was it Coach Nimesh and uh, even Sachil mentioned it? If you want to be a good swimmer, bother your coach. Uh, the better swimmers that I have coached are co swimmers who don't bother me for the sake of bothering. They will always ask me questions. They will always say, hey, coach, check my streamline, check my entry. They're always trying to improve and coaches are there. So you got to bother the coach and the coach will be happy to help you. Okay, that's it. Ah, one more thing. While we pull the recovery, I like that word. Both freestyle, we talked about a high elbow or a rainbow entry. Backstroke, we had a periscope. Recovery, remember, you have to be totally relaxed during the recovery. Think about a pendulum. That's how relaxed your hand needs to be when you recover. So, Kasun, I asked for five minutes. Sorry, I don't know if I went over that, but um, let's go. Thank you, uh, Coach Julian. Right. Now, uh, we will uh, move on to the first presentation. So, actually, uh, today we have three presenters speaking about stroke biomechanics uh, for breaststroke and butterfly. And then we have a discussion regarding starts and turns as well. So first up is coach Kanita Munasinghe from Rainbow Swimming Academy. Um, Kanita represented Sri Lanka uh, in swimming uh, as well as water polo. He also held the national record for the 50 meter breaststroke. He captained the Royal Swimming Team in 2012 and was the water polo captain in 2013. He was also part of the coaching staff at the recently concluded South Asian Games. He will be covering breaststroke biomechanics. Over to you, Kanita. Right. Uh, thank you, Coach Kasun, for that brief introduction. I hope everyone can see me and I hope everyone can hear me well as all right. Uh, first of all, guys, uh, hope everyone enjoyed yesterday's session with Coach Sachil and Coach Nimesh. It was a fantastic session and it's really good to see, really interesting to see some good questions coming up. So I hope during these four to five days, it will be the same and the momentum will be the same. And we have some interesting topics coming up. Coming up. So stay tuned. All right. So uh, and also I would like, uh, like to thank Coach Julian for giving me this opportunity to speak on behalf of all of you guys right so let's straight away move into our topic the breaststrokes of biomechanics so guys i started my career as a freestyler and a butterfly and ended my career as a breaststroker i don't know what happened but i started loving breaststroke yeah uh, maybe that's why today i choose this breaststroke topic as well okay i'm sure there are a lot of breaststrokers in this call at the moment Yes, breaststroke is the uh, slowest stroke out of all four strokes. 
and it seems to be pretty easy right it seems to be pretty easy but it's not the case guys breaststroke is the most complicated most complicated and the hardest stroke i have figured in my life out of all four strokes all right so if you want to be a good breaststroker you need to have the technique you need to have the timing proper timing strength explosiveness and also at the same time flexibility if you have these five components you can definitely be a good breaststroker so moving on to the first slide let's let's see it. the keyword progression keyword progression for breaststroke it's kick and glide that's for your kick small pull and glide that's for your arms or the pull timing of the breathing and undulation right so when i say undulation yes of course senior swimmers might know what undulation means but the junior swimmers might be might it, it might be a bit difficult for them to understand what is this word new word undulation so guys undulation means the hip movement the same hip movement we try to do in butterfly you are remember right your coach asking you to bring your hips up during the butterfly so in breaststroke call so we want everyone to in nowadays we want everyone to bring their hips slightly up from the water so that's what we call the undulation something very similar to butterfly hips if we talk about the mantra in breaststroke we have two mantras guys one for pull and one for kick so i'm going to show a bit of action here so you can clearly understand uh, what i'm talking about if we talk about the pull all right in the slide it says i to the y so the, this is letter i so if i stand like this you can see a letter i right so i keep my body like this this is letter i to the y so this is letter y if i stand like this you can see me as a y so i to the y scoop scoop means the pull then thumb lead you need to bring your thumb in front thumb lead and shoot or some coaches call it as lunge forward so i to the y scoop thumb lead and shoot or lunge forward that's the mantra of pull and mantra for kick is again let's take my elbows as my knees and my wrist as my ankles all right these these are your legs so you bend flex flex means turning your ankles you need to have a good flexibility for this good flexibility flex circle that means push the water back and squeeze squeeze your glutes squeeze your legs and toes pointing again i'm showing it bend flex turning your ankles circle push the water and squeeze or uh, pointing your toes so that those are the two mantras for breaststroke let's move to the next slide so guys here i am going to talk about the blat which we already talked about yesterday and even kasun coach kasun uh, gave introduction about blat so i'm going to go through each and every letter and i'm going to uh, talk about one common error i see in swimming industry and a correction drill for that all right so if you take about b the body the body has to be flat in breaststroke just like an arrow all right like like sir julian said water is 700 times 700 times heavier than air so you are you you are dealing with something very heavy you need to be streamlined you need to be like an arrow to move forward so the the body has to be flat and chin close to the chest all right the common error i see here is popping their head up you can see in the first picture itself can you see it's not a prop, perfect streamlined portion the head is a bit too up if it's a straight uh, perfect streamlined portion the head has to be tucked in between your arms but here you can see the head to the side all right so that's not a good a good type technique that's not a good technique so if you lift your head up like this the body is going to come come to you and you are going to be pushed back so that's a lot of water resistance and you are trying to reach forward 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 but at the same time you need to understand you are battling with water you are battling with water because your head is up so a correction drill we can take is we can do hands on the side kick short firms we say h o s k and look down and count tiles that's another drill we can uh, do because if we start keeping our hands on the side and start counting counting tiles on the floor all right we can count our tiles if our head is or down chin on the chest but if we lift the head up we can't count tiles because we see the front we can't count tiles so that's a common error and a correction drill i see for the body position let's move into the next slide to talk about letter l l is for legs all right legs i explained you all earlier it's basically bend flex circle 
and squeeze. Squeeze in the sense, uh, come to a streamlined position or uh, point your toes out. If you talk about talk about another common error and a correction drill, what I see here is a lot of, even I struggle doing this, even I struggle. Knees going out of the body line. So when they bend, the knees are going to be like this. So if these are your knees, it should be like this. Knees has to be get together, but the error is the knees are going to be like this. So when you put your knees out, again, what is going to come and hit your knees and push you back? That's what's going to happen if you bring your knees out. You all can see in the pictures, especially in the, uh, especially in the fifth picture, you all can see the knees are all already out, which means a lot of water resistance coming up. The correction drill we can do for that is kick with the pull boy, or else you can swim breaststroke using a pull boy while you are kicking. So if you if the target is to try try to keep the pull boy throughout that workout, if pull boy if you drop the pull boy, that means your knees are going wide, which means you are not doing it properly. So coaches and swimmers, you can try doing that to make this error. Let's move into the next slide. It's about arms, the arm position. In breaststroke, guys, arms are very, very, very important. Arms, upper body is very important. All right. Even yesterday, we talked about this. What is more important? Arms or legs? Both are important, but arms give you a better catch. I mean, you have to catch water from your arms. You have to push water from your legs. All right. When it comes to arms, so it's eye to the Y, eye to the Y, scoop, thumb lead, and shoot or lunge forward. A common error I see here is a half pull. That means, guys, in breaststroke, in, in scientific term, in breaststroke, you need the power is generated from this 45 degrees of angle, the first 45 degrees. That means uh, I to the Y position. All right. You need to catch a lot of water in this position to bring it all the way up to your body. But lot, what a lot of people do is they just do a small pull, like a small pull. So you don't catch enough water to move forward. So you have to make sure you do a full pull. Catch, make, make sure the first 45 degrees is very important. Catch more water as possible and bring it all the way back to your body and thumb lead and lunge forward or else jump forward. So as a correction drill, what we can do is, if you want, you can use paddles as well, not a problem. One arm progression drill. So seniors might be knowing what progression drill is, but let's have a look at what is a progression drill. Progression drill is, guys. So uh, let's go by 875s, all right? 875s, one arm progression drill. So keeping right hand in front without moving it and you pull only from left hand, but it should be a full pull. And the next 25, you keep the left hand in, uh, left hand in front and you pull from the other hand, right hand. And the last 25 has to be both arms. So you, you memorize what you did in the first two 25s and you apply that drill to the last 25 and make sure you get big, big deals you must ask your coach to look into it whether you are doing it properly or not because sometimes in the water you might feel ah, I, I think i'm doing it properly but you might not so always take guidance from your coaches when you are doing drills so let's move into the next uh letter it's b again that's for breathing all right so in the breathing it's chin and eyes looking down so guys when you breathe you should look down, all right? So let, let's say your head is up, you should look down, chin and eyes looking down. But I see a lot of swimmers, especially the juniors, I don't see this with seniors, especially the juniors lift their head all the way up. They take, they want to take a big breath, so they lift their head all the way up and that that cause a lot of time waste. Just, just have a look at it. If you do this and put your head down, it take only a few milliseconds. But if you do this all the way up, and put your head, head down, that costs a lot of time waste. So you need to make sure you are only looking down, chin and eyes are looking to down. The common error is head too high, the same error like I said before. The correction drill, what we can do is, we can have the tennis ball drill. How, how we are gonna do it? We can keep a tennis ball between our chin and our chest, in between chin and our chest, just like something similar to that uh, swimming, kicking with the pool boy. So you have to make sure the tennis, you are not dropping the tennis ball when you are swimming. If you lift your head up all the way up, you are going to drop the tennis ball. If you keep it tight, if you look down and stay, tennis ball will remain in the same position. So that's a drill we can use to make that 
common error. Let's move into the last letter. It's letter T. Letter T is for the guys timing. I said if you want to be a good best broker, timing is also important. This is a place a lot of this is a point a lot of uh, best brokers are struggling. They are struggling to get that timing. Until I finished my swimming career, I didn't find the proper timing in my breaststroke. To be honest, even though I even though I broke a lot of records, I didn't find a proper timing. So you have to keep practicing, get, get guidance from your coaches and keep practicing this timing. This is very important for your speed, for your endurance and for everything. All right. So the common error we see here is early head up on breathe. What they do is a lot of some swimmers try to lift their head up during this first 45 degrees, during this first 45 degrees. But that is wrong, guys. You need to make sure you lift your head up in the in swim, in the scoop part, in this part, not in the first 45 degrees. So there is a huge timing error on that. What we can do to correct is correct that common error is we can do butterfly kicks with the stroke pull. All right, so butterfly kick, you do a breaststroke pull and take a go down and do a butterfly kick and again repeat the same thing. This 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 is uh, this drill is helping you to bring your hips up as well not only the timing. Again, I'm telling you to get guidance from your coaches and ask for, after you are done with the drill, ask for comments from your coach. All right. So guys, uh, those are the five words, five words, five letters, black for breaststroke. But having said that, uh, I need one more two minutes to talk about a very important point. That's the underwater pull out, pull out guys. All right, underwater pull out. This is very important. Underwater pull out can make you a winner or a loser it can make you a winner or a loser you need to have a strong underwater pull out in the start during every turn how to how to uh, have a strong underwater pull out you need to keep practicing it every day every length matters every every length matters at training you need to make sure at least you hit maybe 12 to 13 years maybe five to six meters senior swimmers maybe 10 to 12 meters in underwater pull out all right. If you do that, you are taking less stroke. That means you are not tired. That uh, you are less tired than your opponent. You are talk, uh, taking less stroke, and at the same time, you are doing a lot of underwater, more than your component. That means you are not that tired. All right. And the other thing is, when you are doing the underwater pullout, guys, especially be careful. Especially in the start, a lot of people I see, a lot of people get disqualified because of this issue. They do two underwater kicks. Two underwater fly kicks and start doing the underwater blood. It is not, it's not right, guys. It has to be in two ways. Number one is you can do the underwater pull out and the fly kick. Uh, pull. Uh, number two, number two is you can do uh, the uh, the underwater uh, dolphin kick and then you can do the pull out. Those are the only two ways. If you do something else, that means you are going to go for a disqualification. All right. So, and also the, the last point guys, make sure if you want to be a good breast stroker, all right, it's for me, it's all about the underwater pull out and stroke out, cut down on your strokes and lot of mixed swimming. We used to do, uh, my coach was Julian sir. So we used to do a lot of mixed swimming, lot of mixed swimming and the eight, 100 kicks. Again, Julian sir reminded that is also very important. Eight, 100 kicks with 10 seconds to 15 seconds of interval. And also for leg work to have a powerful kick, I used to do, we used to do a lot of uh, breaststroke jumps in the water. When butterflies and freestylers are doing vertical kicks, we used to do a lot of breaststroke jumps, even with the weight. So having said that, you can do all these things, but the last request I'm gonna ask you is, make sure you go and talk to your coach. Coach will always have a plan for you, all right? Not to your parents, to your coach coach will always have a plan for you and then the coach will tell you exactly what to do so that's all about breaststroke guys a basic biomechanic introduction if you have any questions you can uh, direct your questions now and some lot of interesting topics are coming up stay tuned with us thanks again guys for listening thank you over to you coach Kajur. thank you uh, kanita for that informative presentation uh, as uh, Coach Kanita said, uh, if you, I think uh, there are several questions which has already come in. So if you have any questions, please uh, do not hesitate to uh, 
mention that in the chat box okay, right. right now we move on to the next stroke which is butterfly my personal favorite stroke presenting the biomechanics of butterfly will be shehan dasnaika one of our young and upcoming coaching prodigies shehan was part of the josephian swimming team attached to rainbow academy he coached the st thomas college swimming team and now is a coach at visaka vidyalaya he is also a talented musician thank you shehan for being here over to you thank you coach kasun uh, good evening everyone first of all i would like to thank uh, sir julian coach kasun and all the coaching staff uh, who helped to get everything uh, into this and also uh, for giving this me opportunity uh, to sh uh, share some knowledge with our young athletes uh, moving on to my topic today i will be uh, talking about the biomechanics of butterfly stroke by using the blat uh, which was also used by uh, the previous coaches in explaining uh, freestyle backstroke and breaststroke over the past decades uh, the stroke technique has changed a lot from time to time uh, with the emergence of good athletes such as michael phelps and many more uh, moving on to the first slide uh, there are keywords for the progression of butterfly too such as uh, timing of breathing big hips and followed by big kicks and finally the arms or the pull you can also practice the progression by using a mantra as mentioned here fingers front fingers down fingers back and then the swing which is your recovery and finally squeeze which is your entry so i will take you through each one of these actions separately in the upcoming slides uh, let's move to the next slide yeah uh, out of the five main body actions in a stroke body position is one of the important factors you should master to have an efficient butterfly majority think uh, butterfly is a short axis stroke uh, as in breast stroke that you have to move your body up and down but in butterfly the scenario is very different uh, cuz uh, as uh, as you have to maintain a more horizontal body uh, position to drive your body in front uh, by minimizing the dragging effect or the resistance so uh, more when a front breath is taken when you breathe into uh, when you take a breath in butterfly most of the swimmers they try to bring their shoulders out of the surface and also by bringing your shoulders out it will actually distract the body position or the streamline position of your body by uh, bringing your body position to a 30 to 40 degrees of elevation so to prevent this we should focus more on the posture line and the balance of the body as i have mentioned in the slide uh but uh, said that uh, butterfly is the coordination of head chin hip and your legs so i would like to uh, mention i would like to name butterfly as a four body stroke uh, uh, stroke because we use the head the chin and the hip uh, and also your legs to do a butterfly stroke so moving on to the common errors you can prefer swimmers uh, most of the swimmers they attempt to achieve the rocking effect of the butterfly, uh, butterfly by folding both and both upper and the low bodies from their hip so uh, by doing this uh, i think most most of the swimmers they will lose their core stability they will uh, try to lower the hip and also it will actually eliminates the uh, balance in your stroke uh, and i think this error is the most i think one of the main reason why most of the butterflies have injuries on their back so the main reason the main goal of the following drills i have mentioned is to work on a proper streamlined body position and also to uh, have a firm core which will help you to keep your hip on the surface uh, help in the horizontal position and also to make a efficient butterfly uh, so the correction drill that i have uh, mentioned here is uh, weight shifting weight shifting means having your hands on the side and then doing butterfly kick using your head using your chest using your hip and your legs so you can work while having your arms on the side Uh, moving your head in front followed by your chest uh, your chest your hip and then your legs all the way down to your toes 
So let's move to the next slide. Yeah, legs uh, is the second segment of blood. In butterfly, uh, your kick is always using both the legs together. And then the main point that you have to uh, have in your mind is butterfly kicking is not horse kicking or kicking using your knees. It's all about kicking, starting from your head, chest, your hips and your legs. So it's always a full body uh, movement, starting from your head, followed by down your legs. So in a butterfly, one cycle, one arm cycle, you have two kicks where both the kicks have to be same, equal in power and size. Both kicks have to be equal in power and size. That is more important. So when you ask, uh, you, you might have a question, where to kick? I mean, in a, in, a, in a one arm cycle, where do you have to kick those two kicks? So the first kick is when your arms are at the top, in front of your head, just before you start pulling. And the second kick is, when you pass, when your palms passes your belly button and bring it up to your hips. First kick, when your arms are at the top, just before you start pulling. Second kick is when the palm, uh, palms passes the belly button. So out of these two kicks, I think most of the swimmers, butterflyers, the second kick they try, they feel hard to do it. I think second kick is also important as the first kick because that is the kick that you use to push your body forward or helps the propulsion as uh, Kasum sir mentioned in his presentation to work, to move your body forward faster. You should always combine your the press and the kick work together to move in front. And the last two points of this drive knee downwards. What do you mean by this? If you always try to point your knees down towards the floor, it will help you to, if you, if you have a, if you have a heels down, it will actually help you to bring your heels to the surface and then maintain a proper streamlined body. And then the last point is the most important thing guys, in butterfly you, should, you always have to focus and uh, work on not doing slow kicks and then smaller kicks and slow kicks in your butterfly. Moving to the next slide. Uh, yeah, the common errors, as I mentioned earlier, we kick with small range of kicks. That is the that is the most common error most of the fly, butterflies do. So if you uh, if I, if you move to the correction drills, you can see hands on the side kick is one of the drills I have included. Second is vertical vertical dolphin kick, as you can prefer the image on the side. And then the last drill that I have mentioned is backward dolphin kick or as toe kick. So these are three drills that you can work uh, to work on uh, kicking. You always have to keep in your mind, guys. For propulsion of butterfly, 70% of your arms, 30% of your legs, both will get together and bring you 100%. So your arms and your legs both are important in this case. And relax, but guys, if when I mention the word relax, it, it doesn't mean that you have to do your recovery slow. Relax arms, but fast arms. The faster you bring your arms in front, the faster you can start the next throw. So recovery arms relax, but make sure you drive your arms faster. And one more thing before you finish your entry, I have pointed out here, your heads, or before you drive your arms from your recovery position, your head should go under the surface. And then only you have to follow through your recovery and then enter in front of your shoulder or to the shoulder width. Your heads should go inside water before you enter. That is one main point. And also in entry, guys, you always have to focus. You always have to have a controlled entry. Your palms facing down in your entry, not to the side. You can't face your palms to the side in your entry. Your palms should face to the ground or to the surface. And then you should enter in front of your shoulders. You call this shoulder width entry, not a narrow entry. You call this a narrow entry, but you always have to enter just in front of your shoulders. I have put a bold, uh, I have put a sentence, I have put a point uh, using bold letters. Prevent palms passing the hips in next seat. What do you mean by this? As I mentioned, after the press position, then comes the recovery. But before the recovery, guys, as soon as your palms reach out your hips or the thighs, you should start doing your recovery instead of pressing much your, much, uh, pressing your palms more to the sky. So as soon as your palms meet the hips, you should start recovery instead of pushing your palms all the way up to the sky. Hope everything is clear in this slide. Let's move to the next slide. 
where we talk about the co common errors. Next slide, a slide please. Yeah, so uh, common errors in butterfly arms, entering outside the body line, not entering in front of your body, and then pulling to the side, not having fingers run, fingers down, and then recovery, having uh, bent elbows instead of straight arm, uh, will be a few uh, errors in your arms in butterflies. So I have mentioned two drills to work on it, walking mantra, and then the single arm drill. Guys, walking mantra is a good mantra to work on it because you just have to focus on your arms only, where you have to work on fingers front, down, back, the recovery and then the entry, you just only have to focus on it because your legs are working. And also the one arm drill is also very helpful because you just have to focus on one arm at a time because you are doing one arm, single arm, fly drill. Those are two important drills to work on your arms. Moving to the fourth uh, segment of BLEP, which is the breathing. Yeah, breathing uh, keywords, uh, you can name it as chin and eyes looking down. And then guys, when it comes to breathing, most of the uh, uh, swimmers have a question when we should start breathing, when we should start, what is the point that we have to start doing or taking a breath. So in that question, I would like to answer that question this way. So you start breathing or your inhalation takes place as the arms complete the up sweep and begin to recover. To, uh, if I'll make it more simple. As soon as your palms passes your belly button, and just before you start your recovery position, you should raise your chin. Please listen to this very properly. I'm not telling to raise your shoulders. I'm telling to work on your, work on your chin. So using your neck muscles, when you have a head down like this, to raise your chin to the surface, almost touching the surface, not your shoulders, and then take a nice controlled breath and then move to your recovery. So breathing happens as soon as your palms passes your belly button just before the recovery. And again, the conclusion of your breath should be, face should return back to water before the arms, as I mentioned earlier, that is one important point. And this question is also one of the main questions most of the butterflies have, how often you should breathe, either every stroke or every other stroke. This question actually depends guys, according to the capability or the ability of the swimmer or to the strength of the swimmer, and also the pace of the stroke. So if you work more on your core and if you're stable enough, you can stick to every other stroke breathing. But if you are still a learner, you can stick with every stroke breathing. Let's move uh, to the common errors of this uh, segment. Head and chest too high and then second is head up in entry. I mentioned these two points in the slide also. So if you prefer the first image in this, you can see the first image with the cross, it will clearly show the gap between the shoulder and the water surface. And again, the gap between the surface and the chin. You can see there's a huge gap. But if you consider the picture with the correct mark or a tick, the chin is almost touching, uh, touching the surface, grazing out, and your shoulders are just above the surface, not having a huge gap. So if you check the image that I have included right uh, on the right side, corner. On the top, it's uh, Mark Spitz, who was, a, who, has, who was an Olympian back in 1970s. And then next is Michael Phelps. You can see, you can call this as, uh, as an evolution of butterfly also. You can see the difference between the techniques of these two swimmers. Uh, all right, let's move to the last segment of this black. Timing of breathing or as you can call this segment as coordination, okay? So timing of breathing or the coordination in, uh, in butterfly is, you have two things in coordination. First thing is when to breathe, where to breathe is one question you have and that is one point where you work on coordination. Second is where you should start doing your two kicks. So if you have a better uh, coordination, better, better timing in breathing, and if you have a better 
coordination with where to kick, you will have a perfect butterfly. So if you prefer the image that I have included, guys, first image will show you the first kick happens just in front of the head when your arms are just in front of the head and just before you start your uh, pull. Second image will show you the second kick happens as soon as your palms passes your belly button. So that shows you the coordination of your kick, where to kick. Moving on to the next slide, as I mentioned earlier, working on kick is also coordination and also the time of breathing, where, where you should start breathing is also the, is the next uh, coordination you have to work on. So as I mentioned in the breathing slide, you should start breathing as soon as your palms passes your belly button and just before you start your recovery. So these are few key points that you have to keep in your head if you are working on, if you, if you want to make a proper coordination in butterfly. Hips up on entry uh, phase. What do you mean by this? You should always have big hips in your entry. As soon as you enter your arms inside water, you should bring out your hips with huge hips working on undulation, perfect undulation. And also the second point, big kick in push phase. This is the second kick I'm talking about. You should have a strong kick in your push phase, which will help you to uh, which will help for the propulsion of butterfly with the use of your arms plus the use of your kick. So uh, common errors, the swimmers attempt to kick and pull at the same time and then second tend to miss out the second supporting leg kick as the arms recover. So coordination about coordination, you can work on these two. Uh, first is the breathing, where to breathe. Second is coordinating your arms, uh, coordinating the uh, two kicks in your butterfly. Correction drills I have included fly arms with free side kick and breaststroke pull with fly kick. Now, swimmers might wonder how to do these two drills. Fly arms with free side means you don't have to think about your butterfly kick, you just have to focus on your arms only. So, you do free side kick using uh, pins and then work on your arms on concentrating on your arms. Coordination of upper body, you work on this drill. Second drill, if you start with the second drill, it will help you to work on the coordination of your lower body where you have to do. Stroke, you don't have to think about your arms, you just have to think about your low body kicking coordination. Uh, so these two days you can work on your upper body and low body separately if you want to have a perfect coordination. So one main thing I will, uh, I will uh, conclude my presentation with this. Butterfly is combination of your head, your chest, your hip and your legs. So always coordination is more important. If you have a better coordination, you don't have to waste your energy and strength. It's all about working on your coordination to get, a, get an efficient butterfly. I think uh, I'm done with my presentation right now. I think most of, I hope uh, every, all the swimmers got some uh, new terms and would, got some uh, new ideas regarding butterfly. Uh, thank you everyone. Thank you all the participants today uh, being here. Hope to answer your questions in the final segment. Thank you everyone. Over to you Coach Kasun. Thank you very much, Shahan, for your insightful presentation. Uh, apologies on the previous delay while the presentation was going on, where Coach Kasun had to face a technical difficulty with the power failure with electricity. So anyway, let's uh, move forward with the final presentation for today, which is starts and turns. Next, we have the bubbly and enthusiastic Mr. Imran Mohammed. Coach Imran has been attached to Rainbow Aquatics for nearly eight years now. Prior to joining Rainbow, he was stationed in Dubai for a couple of years. He successfully oversaw the Muses College swimming team for several years. He was also at Elizabeth Moyer and now is the head coach at Lyceum International School, Wattala. He was also part of the coaching staff at the 2016 South Asian Age Group Championship. Welcome Imran, the stage is yours. Thank you, Sean, for your wonderful introductions. And, and I would like to say a big thanks to coach Julian to giving me this opportunity to represent this presentation, right? Um, Sean, the slide, please. So, guys, uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, the all the four strokes starts and turn, right? Which is very important in your swimming career, right? 
so let's see what are the further progressions so if you want to really rock on or on on the block right next slide so the main key point i like to talk about the what are the progression of the the starting position and the progression of your push when you dive and then the progression of your entry right these are the main progression we are going to talk right without failing but the most i mean our main focus and the goal right you don't want to see the splash when you dive and you don't want to make a splash and you don't want to hear the splash remember the you are focusing your goal when you dive if you want to make a beautiful dive and prove yourself and one of the best diver in the in the world right next slide please so let's talk about the breakdown starts for the feet breast and butterfly what are the starting positions so there are two type of starting which is the both the both feet right in front and the trek starts so basically guys the both feet right the juniors they normally they do that so what are the progression let's talk talk about this so your both feet i mean you need to keep your feet apart and you grip the edge from your toe which is very important and if you do the track start your power leg will come now look at the picture as you guys can see the picture right and the track start your power leg will come right in front and the other leg will go right behind and make sure you raise your heel make sure guys the back foot must stay on the right spot like what i explained now as soon as you put everything on the right spot right and your arms what happen your hand you grab the end of the block with the both hand make sure you grab and make sure you hold it steady all right and what happen after that your hip every time higher than your head positions which is very important then what happen after that as soon as you get the hips high your head will go down completely so these are the main progression if you do the normal starts right with the both feet front and the track starts let's move next slide please so what is a push pace like what i spoke the last i mean the last slide if you put everything in order guys right remember your body is ready to explode it right so as soon as you get the command right you push with your both leg if you go with your normal start juniors right intermediate swimmers and if you do the track start your power leg which is the right in front of your i mean right in front the the the, uh, the legs it will push you to for more move forward right so if you are on the right position and what happened your back foot earlier like what i told you if you keep your back foot on the right spot those are the common mistake we can see when the swimmers are doing the track start then keeping the legs at the right position so if you keep it there as you guys can see the the last picture and yellow arrow is showing that the right position every time show you the right legs which is the straight and pointing the toe and that then your body is ready to enter the exact entry without failing and if you not keep your back foot remember guys you your leg will go side to side those are the most common mistake we can see you guys when you do the track start next slide please so what is the entry now as soon as you push off your dive not going to go and guys you guys can see the picture number 1 so when you dive now your entry now you're not going to dive too high not too low stay at the middle the the it's clearly mentioned i steer a lighting with the green line so you have to push your body forward as soon as you push there what happen you stretch your chin forward and quickly you look the place you are going to enter that seems to be done very fast then what happen after that you quickly you will put the head down now look at the picture number 2 and 3 now as soon as you put the head down your body must be stretched and your tie to your core and you throw your hand forward to enter your streamline guys right? these are the right progression if you want to prove you are one of the great starter in the world then as soon as you get into the with the streamline you dive into the one ring what are the progression of the dive into the one ring you dive your arm will enter first and your head will enter second your hip will go third and your leg will go last so if you put 
everything in order in one ring, no splash, and one of the greatest diving in the in, in your progression. Now, something in interesting part, the last one is as soon as you dive, you basically we are something in interesting to make our children, our swimmers to, to do the progression of the underwater kit. What do we basically we say that when you dive, you glide and you wait, right? Then what happened? As soon as you wait, then you do the whale kick. Look at the picture. It's clearly mentioned that. And you do the second kick is going to be the dolphin kick. And the third kick is going to be the flutter kick. And you start to do the breakout. So these are the progression, guys. Today, I'm going to talk a lot about this underwater kick progression because these are the area we are really, really big. And every single day, we are fixing our swimmers, right? So next slide, please. So the backstroke start. Guys, look at the picture below. The middle one, the middle picture clearly say that the white strong hold the bar, the bar, you must, when you hold the bar, your arms are straight, must be right in front of the shoulder. Not, do not keep your hands together. You will not gonna get the full range when the, when you get the command. And the next, what will happen? You are hit, then, then as soon as you get the command, what happen? You gonna bend the arm, right? Now you can, you guys can take a picture number one and number three, both side. Then you see the bend arm, then head must be go down and make sure you relax and wait for your command to get the steady pace until that you will keep your body relaxed. Then what happened to your leg? Your leg must be bent, close your chest, right? You close your chest, then hit near your heel. Now, as you guys can see the middle picture and the last picture on your right side, it's clear to say that you are hip, you are hip near your heel, right? Then what is the next progression? Your feet on the wall, toes pointing up and feet apart. Feet apart, it's depend on the, the swimmer's flexibility and if they, they, they have a different, if you have a comfortable with, I mean, if you want to keep your feet together or if you want to keep little feet apart. So you have to talk and communicate with your coach to get the explosive done, right? Different swimmers, different flexibility. Then you have to find it there. But make sure when you keep your feet on the wall, it must be on the water line, not too high, not too low, right? So these are the progression of the starting positions. Next slide, please. Then push space on the command. Now, you guys can see the below picture on your left side. As soon as you get the command, now what happened? arm throw over your head for the streamline. You throw your arm over your head and what happened your leg will give you the maximum power if you keep your right position on the wall, right? I like what I explained before. Then what happened, number, picture number two, your head will go back, then you arch your back. Picture number three, how, guys, you have to look this picture, how look beautiful is it? Arch your back for the clean entry then what happened your lower body then you allow you you allowing to legs to raise above the water or you force yourself to legs to raise above the water those are the most common mistakes when the dashtokers are starting they not allow the raise their legs so we more normally we say that do force yourself and do that until it connects your body right so these are the progression on your push base next slide please Sean So entry, like what I told you before the previous slide, as soon you push and push off, right? You dive into the one ring. When you dive into the one ring, remember your arm, head and hips and feet needs to be going in order without failing, right? As soon you dive, you dive, you glide. Remember guys, you wait, you do whale kick, number one, and you do dolphin kick, number two, and you flutter kick and start carry on with your swimming with the coordinations, right? These are the progression of the backstroke. So um, let's move to the turns for all the strokes. So there are, there are key points I want to talk about. The basically, guys, when we do the turns for all the strokes, so there we focus normally stroke count from flag to the wall and wall to the flag, which is very important, guys. If you're not taking your stroke count, to flat to the wall, so especially the backstroke. I'm gonna tell you guys, you are the first person to looking behind the wall. So make sure your stroke count is very important, right? And the right number. Then the quick in and out. You need to be more proactive when you get into the tumble turn, right? You can't do it. 
and the most common mistake but we what we are normally seeing that most of i mean i mean many swimmers they're doing during the workouts they swim so fast when they get close to the wall they do tumble like easy so please don't use your turns like as a recovery or easy don't give lose that even if your coach ask you to swim easy right you can swim easy but when you get into the wall react fast which is very important good example reaction i have a tennis ball on my hand if i throw fast to the wall now imagine how fast it will come back to me that's the same thing i want to put it back what you throw you get into the wall hit the wall and you come back like a tennis ball right and the third one is going to be the breathing the good breathing mechanism right so you need the right amount of breathing in your lungs and you have to have a control when you have to do your underwater kick progressions according to your distance right remember these things the underwater kicks mean the fina rule allow you to do them exactly the 15 meter so we need to get the maximum of technique on that next slide please so let's talk about the breakdown for turns for the freestyle right now look at the picture number one t mark basically the seniors will do one pull to the wall when you get the t mark and the juniors they do two pull to the wall right and what do we focus next if we're not going to breathe inside the t mark which is very important then no looking at the wall right as soon as you get into the wall without looking then you roll the quick turns and you place the both feet to the wall right do what do we do place both feet to the wall and toes point to the sky and your hand over head to slim line lock the head off and the chicken wings that's a quick one lock the head off if i take the arms like a chicken wings can i knock my head that is completely wrong now i'm not wearing a cap i'm going to take what lock the head off and you go back to the slim line these are the basic to make every swimmer's life easier I am mean, easily can understand and most of the time we are successful on these things when we are giving you example every time right so as soon as you knock the head off what happened you push you glide and you wait and you do the whale kick and the dolphin kick and the flutter kick and you do the breakout so these are the breakdown for the freestyle turns next slide please so let's talk about the backstroke guys look at the picture underneath stroke count flag to the wall Earlier, like what I told you, if you do not count the stroke from flag to the wall, you will make your strokes ugly and you will look at the back of the wall. So you need to get the right amount of the stroke count. Then as soon as you get into the wall, you take one pull and turn your stomach. You take one pull at the same time you roll turns. As soon as you get the turns, you knock the head off, not the chicken wings. You knock the head off right and what happened you push your toes point into the sky and you push you glide and you wait then you do well kick and the dolphin kick and the flutter kick with the streamline without losing right so these are the breakdown for the backstroke next slide please so let's talk about uh, the the best stroke, something is really interesting part. You need to write amount of breathing to working on your underwater pullouts, right? Uh, they, and also, this is something interesting part. Our children, they really love it. We, we do this one like a mantra, something, I mean, to get more interaction to, and also we, I mean, the children are learning very fast. We call that like mantra, touch, jab, hold your mom, and you push. Now, let's talk about what is touch. Touch means now, look at the picture number one. Touch, make sure you touch with the both hand. Your arms are straight. Your head is down. When, make sure when you touch, you touch the water line, not the, by the edge of the pool. So jab. Jab means you jab with the elbow. The picture number two on your right side up. Jab. You jab with your elbow. Make sure the elbow will go back and your body ready to push off on the side. And the next one, you call your mom, which is we call that answer the call so when you take answer the call your arms coming over the water and also which is very important your chin is on the surface level so most of the time when the swimmers they do the breast strokes they try to jump over the water those are the most common mistake you need to keep your chin on the surface level which is very important right then as soon you take the push off 
we're gonna go three, two, one. What is three, two, one? Let's roll the key things. We're gonna go three seconds off the push off on your streamline, and we're gonna go two seconds off your pull out. Make sure you when you do pull out, you pull underneath the body, right? Make sure you pull underneath the body like the butterfly mantra. Then you push all the way back. As soon as you push all the way back, you wait for two seconds. Then the one second is gonna be you squeeze and you shoot and go to the wide positions, right? So when you do squeeze, normally we're not gonna take the arm outside the water. If you take the outside the water, remember you are the, the resistant person in your underwater pull out. Every time the last one, squeeze and you shoot. Take the arms underneath and squeeze and you shoot and go back to the wide positions. These are the progressions of the breaststroke stars. Next slide, uh, Kashan. Uh, the butterfly strokes, same like the last stroke, like what I told you, but a little bit of different, only the underwater kick will change. Get the right amount of air to work in on your underwater kick, right? So now what happened? Your arms go straight, your head is completely down, and you touch the water line, and as soon as you touch the water line, then you will jab. What happened? You jab, and you call your mom, answer the phone call, then what happened? You push, and you glide and you wait and you do what? You do the whale kick and the dolphin kick and also you do fly kick, not the flutter kick, right? Remember, which is very important, right? So these are the breakdown. Uh, next slide, Sean. So the IM turns, fly to back, back to base, best to feel. Same like what I talked to you before the last previous slide, a little bit of changes on your turns. So I'm gonna move a little bit of uh, fast I believe you guys can understand more than what I'm explaining that right let's talk about fly to back like touch and pace same as a butterfly you touch with the both hand this is very important and your head must be down as soon as you push as soon as you touch then you will jab you call your mom and make sure you are you are push off on the side and make sure you push off on your back not on the stomach juniors you have to Watch this very carefully. These are the area during the IM, most of the swimmers I get the disqualifications. You push off on the side and you turn it on your back, it's not on the summer, and you will get the underwater kick progression. Push, glide, and wait, and you whale kick, and dolphin kick, and the flutter kick, and your breakout, which is very important in your, in your swimming career, the underwater kick. Guys, remember that. Next slide, please. And the IM back to this. Counting stroke, earlier like what I told you, right amount of stroke and your arm must be straight, right? And you touch the wall and what happened? As soon as you touch the wall, you bring the legs backward quickly to the wall and you take the push off on the side and move into the stomach and you push off with the streamline with the three seconds and you take the pull out. When you, took the, when you take the pull out, make sure you pull underneath the body and make sure you wait for two seconds as soon as you finish and you squeeze, not gonna take outside. You take the arm squeeze and you do shoot and go back to the little finger on the top and the strokes. So these are the progression. And one thing I want to hit, there's another one more turn. We say that the uh, crossover flip turn. So most of our intermediate, junior, national, senior, national, they do that. Some of the juniors also, they do that more initiatively, right? So what do we focus? As you guys can see the top picture, your arm straight, Right, your head all already down and back and stretch. Then as soon as you touch, you bring your knee to the chest and roll back and you push. Then what happened? On the on on, on, on the stomach, and you're gonna go three, three, three seconds off on your push and two seconds off your pull out, and the one second on your shoot without failing. So these are the breakdown for back to breast. So next slide, Sian, please. So let's, the last is going to be the breast, breast to feet style. Same as a breast stroke, guys. We already learned. You touch, make sure your head is down. You touch with the water line, right? No looking at the wall. Then what happened? You jab. Make sure you jab with the elbow. You answer the phone call, which is very important. Your chin is on the surface level without jumping over the water. Then you push off on the side and you glide and you wait and you go whale kick and you go dolphin kick and you flutter kick 
and which is very important in your swimming career right so guys i i believe that i am done for the day and before i say uh thank you to you guys what my request what my uh request to all of you like what coach julian was explaining earlier guys start me when you do start right you have to have a plan with your coach at least once in a week one or two time after your training right and when you do the training you need to ask question to your coach Sir, tell me then, how is my start? How is my glide? How is my start, start, standing position? Am I good? You keep on asking questions and more interaction with your coach, which is very important, guys. And another thing, your turns. You don't need to do the turn separate times. The turn during the workout. Example, let me tell you that if your workout, if your training is one and a half hour or one hour and 15 minutes, how many turns opportunity do you have to do that? Do too many and you can that every turn is your new experience have it and talk to your coach am i doing a good push off am i doing a good glide keep on communicating have a good interaction if you have that involvement with your coach that coach will every time think about you not only the one entire team and even that coach go home what will happen he will thinking about you and get it get ready for the next day plan and i'm going to think about it all oh, right i have that summer and i was telling me that to do that so this is something is really important guys so please guys have a plan and write it down your weakest area and sit and have a plan that is my last request and wish you all the best and have a fabulous night thank you sean now is yours if you have any questions guys you can put it down Thank you, Imran, for that insightful presentation. Uh, I will unmute the speakers. That's Coach Kanita, Coach Shahan, Coach Imran, and Coach Julian, so that we can answer a few of the questions. I think we have gone past the time a few minutes because we had some good information. It took, took us some time. We had some technical issues, but everything is under control now. We will, we will answer uh, as many as we can. And whatever we don't, whatever we fail to answer, we will get back to you on WhatsApp or in a text format. Let me unmute the speakers. Coach Kanita has been unmuted. Coach Kanita, I'm trying to unmute you. Unmuting you, Coach Julian has been unmuted. Coach Shehan also has been unmuted. Coach mm -hmm. Anita, can you please check on whether you can be unmuted on your own? Because because every time I unmute you, you go back into mute. Yeah, you're on. Thank you. Okay, let's uh, move up to some questions. We'll start with breaststroke. Unfortunately, we can answer all questions, but we have uh, about six questions, some interesting ones. Thank you very much for your interest shown. Coach Kanita, your first question has been, why does our, bo why does our body supposed to be flat and why does our chin have to be close to the chest? I think the question should be, why does the body supposed to be flat and why does the chin have to be close to the chest? I think that's the very first question we came up, guys. Thanks a lot for the, all all the questions. Very important. Can show a big interest in interest in you guys. Thanks a lot once again. All right, guys. So the first question: Why does your body supposed to be flat, and why does our chin have to be close to the chest? Guys, it's a very very basic thing. Not only for breaststroke, for every stroke, like I like we always said, to minimize the water resistance. So to minimize the water resistance, we have to be like an arrow in the water so that you can break the water and go move forward fast. But if you start acting like a, uh, let's say a big ball or a circle inside the water, there's a lot of resistance coming towards your way. So that's why it is very important to keep our body flat. Not like this, flat. So if it's flat, you, if this is water, this is, uh, uh, this is your body, if it's flat, you can straight away go inside from water. But if you drop your uh, body like this, see, the pace gets hit by water, the body gets hit by water, the legs get hit by water, and you are going to push back. 
I mean, you have to make a lot of effort to move forward. That's why you have to be flat and your chin, sorry, head should be on the chin should be on the chest. That's very basic for all the uh, strokes, not only for breaststroke. Thank you, coach. Why should we turn our ankles when doing the kick? Does it make it more faster? Well, of course, yes. All right. This is why the ankle flexibility is very important. Guys, every day, small tip, every day after training, do for about at least 5 to 10 minutes, do some ankle flexibility stretches. You can Google it. If not, you can text message me and ask, well, what are these ankle flexibility stretches? This is very important. So if, if these are our legs, if you bend it, without turning your ankles, if you kick, you get this amount of range. In front of me, you get this amount of, amount of range to uh, push that water back. But if you turn your ankles like this, look at the amount of range, look at the amount of water uh, over your legs. All right, you can push all those all that water and move forward fast. Got it? Still, you will move forward. If, uh, still, you will move uh, forward even if you don't uh, uh, turn your ankles. But compared, if you bend your uh, sorry, if you flex your ankles, you will move much further than the previous choice. So that's the answer for that. Moving on, what happens if we take a long pull instead of a short pull and then shoot? Will we slow down? More than I'm saying slow down, I would say you won't move for, for, uh, further. You will have the same speed going on, but you won't move forward. You won't move forward as in you will not start the next, you will not, you won't be able to start the next pull in the maximum distance. Got it? You will start taking much more strokes. If if you if you start take a big pull, you are catching a lot of water. But if you take a small pull, you are catching only this much of amount of water. So you will you you will have that speed going, but you won't move, you are not going to move that further. And you are going to take a lot of extra strokes to cover that 25 or whatever the distance. So always make sure to cut down on strokes to make sure you have a big pull. You have a clear big pull to catch that water into you. Thank you. When I do breaststroke, I don't seem to go forward. Even when I kick my hardest. Why is that? So guys, it's not, not only about kick. I told you kick and the pull and the uh, uh, rhythm. Everything is very important. What we can do is guys, I, I, I cannot give a proper uh, answer for this because this can be one of your technique issues. This, this can be one of your arm issues. We don't know. What you can do is, you can always go to your coach and say, Sir, look, so guys, this is, this is something we do at Train Boost. Your assistant coach is your camera. Your coach's assistant coach is your camera or the tap. You go near your coach and say, look, coach, uh, I have some issue. I'm not moving forward, uh, further. Can you uh, explain me why is this? So coach can ask you to do a swim and coach can video record you. From that video record, guys, trust me, you can find out a lot of, lot of issues in your techniques. It can be a kicking error, pulling error, or a head pulsion error, anything. So what you can do, the best result to get, what you can do is go speak to your coach and ask him to do a video. And this is very important for all the coaches as well. Because step or the phone or the whatever the camera can be your assistant coach, uh, on the deck. I go to the final question, Coach Kanita. Uh, when racing, how long do we glide for? If we glide too long in in training and racing, will we slow down? Uh, honestly, guys, it depends on your race. All right. If you are doing a fifty meter race, if you are doing a fifty meter race, you can cut down on the glide. If you are doing a two hundred or a hundred or a two hundred races. Yes, of course you need glide. All right. Uh, watch some videos on YouTube how Olympic swimmers are swimming. Just count their stroke uh, stroke count. For a few, let's take one swimmer. Let's take Adam Peaty. All right, and he's doing 50 and 100 breaststroke. Count his strokes for the 50 meter breaststroke, and count his stroke for the 100 meter breaststroke in his first 50. You can you will see a big difference. I mean for 100. He's slowing down, slowing down the tempo and the uh, glide. Uh, no, sorry, improving the glide, but he's slowing down the tempo. That's to save energy. So it actually depends on your 
race. So what you can do is at training, when you give, uh, when coach gives you a 50 meter race uh, training set, hit that 50 meter target you have. When coach gives you a 200 meter uh, uh, race pace set, cut down on your strokes and try to glide much further so that you have a clear understanding. All right, for the 200, this is the amount of strokes I can do. For the 50, this is the amount of strokes I am going to do. So you will get that tempo also into your body. So always, that's what I said. For me, breaststroke is always about going underwater, hitting 12 to 30 meters of distance and stroke count. Stroke count, stroke count, stroke count. All right, I think that's all the questions. Thank you, Coach Shehan. Thank you. Assistance. Before I move to the butterfly questions, I only have two butterfly co the questions. Coach Julian, do you have anything to add to breaststroke to just advise the swimmers who are online with us? Uh, Coach Julian, I don't, I can't hear you. Something wrong with you. I have unmuted you, but uh, you seem to be not audible. Mm. Coach Julian doesn't seem to be all right. Coach Julian seems to have a connection issue as well. So let's move on to the butterfly questions. Coach Jan, the yeah. first question I've got is what's the difference between Keyhole pull and diamond pull. All right. Yeah. Uh, I think it's better if I can show uh, some pictures regarding the two uh, pulls. Yeah. Are you free to share the screen, please? Thank you. Yeah. Go with it. Go uh, All right, guys. Coach Julian, I hope you're audible. After this, I will get back to you. I think I'm back. Uh, Can you guys hear? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we'll finish this question and get yeah. back to you. No, I mean, Shannon first. Yeah, guys, uh, if you can uh, see this uh, image, which is on the screen right now. So this is what you call uh, a keyhole pull. So in your pulling, in your arms, you, you drive your arms or you pull your arms in a shape of a keyhole. So in this, you can clearly see guys when after this is the first. Somebody seems to be drawing. Coach, you'll have to clear it, please. Yeah, so in this keyhole pool, you can clearly see your palms are, you start pulling or you start catching water when your palms are already halfway through, okay? So you don't start catching water just in front of your head, not in this position, not in this position, but you can see the third position in your arms. You start pulling uh, when your arms are in the third movement in the picture. So when you move to the other image, you can see this is what you call a diamond uh, shape pull. So in diamond shape pull, guys, the advantage you have is as in freestyle, in butterfly, you pull fingers front, fingers down, fingers back. So the advantage you have in diamond pulling is you can start catching water just in front of the head itself. You don't have to, like in keyhole pull, you don't have to circle your arms and then start catching. Just in front of your head itself, you can start catching and push your water all the way down your thighs. So this is the advantage of diamond pull. So if you start doing diamond pull, you can catch, you can have, a, have an early catch and catch more water to press it down to your thighs. Thank you. Thank you, Coach. Next question. As you mentioned in the slides, what's the difference between a straight arm recovery on butterfly and recovery with a high elbow lifted slightly? Yeah, I think it's a uh, straight arm recovery and uh, elbow bent recovery, I think. So uh, if I show you what is uh, what are these two uh, recoveries. So the first arm, straight arm recovery is you have your arm straight, you don't have you don't bend your hand, but elbow lifted one is you slightly have an elbow lift or you slightly have a high elbow in your recovery. Okay, those are the two types that uh, this particular swimmer has uh, mentioned. So in uh, straight arm recovery, guys, when I move to the recovery, I will use a word called momentum. Okay, so you can note it down and later on you can research on this. Momentum is 
uh, the speed of your arms or the rate where your arms are moving in front or as if you uh, turn it into basic words the movement the amount of movement of an object with some particular weight so imagine your arms are objects right now so when you have it they say the science uh, the science of this part is all about when you have straight arms it's easy easy for you to drive your arms and the momentum is high so they say if the momentum is high the speed of your of that particular object is also high so if the momentum in the momentum is less the speed of that particular object is less so uh, in this case your object is are your arms so when you if you want to speed up or have more moment, momentum you have to have always linear or straight arm instead of bent elbow i think it's clear and uh, one more thing coach and i would like to finish uh, my uh, part with this so this is also uh, based on other strokes also imagine imagine this is a kickboard when you're back to a swimming pool you can try this uh, when you're uh, when you're in a uh, swimming pool so imagine this is a kickboard and uh, first try using a kickboard on the surface leave, uh, have a kickboard on the surface and drag it yourself and see whether you have to put more effort to drag it yourself and second after doing that movement you put half of your kickboard below the surface and the upper part of the kickboard about the surface your half of the board is under the surface and the rest is up and then now you start dragging it yourself and see whether you have to put the equal effort that you put in the previous movement or you have to put extra effort so same thing with your body when your body is not streamlined when part of your body is down there is more resistance it's hard for you to move in front but if you maintain a nice streamlined body it's always easy for you to uh, battle all have a game with the resistance and moving front thank you everyone thank you coach thank you coach before i uh, just get a few comments from coach julian let me uh, uh, make a small comment to the participants i can see the participants leaving one by one i'm sure we have gone beyond the time and you all want to head out but uh, a word a piece of advice this is where the question and answer is where you would learn something extra you will clarify your doubts so if you could hold on with us for about another 10 minutes maximum you would uh, get the maximum benefit out of what we are trying to achieve here because uh, the coaches here will try to cl uh, to clarify your doubts as much as possible so this is where you might learn even more than what you learned during the lecture so try to hold on for another 10 minutes coach julian anything to add on the strokes before i go into skill work um i just want to maybe because we spoke about the stroke and a lot of people said the kick might not be that fast um i just want to say this that some breaststrokers who have a strong kick are born to swim breaststroke which means it's not that their arms are strong but their ankle flexibility is not that great now kanita talked about ankle flexibility and breaststrokers have a different type of flexibility that uh, needs to be done so we need to clarify that the two types of flexibility one is for your flutter kick someone said what is flutter flutter kick i think that was a question somebody asked fantastic flutter means your freestyle or your backstroke or your breast uh, butterfly kick where it goes up and down breaststroke is about the ankle and so the question the kanita also uh, uh, answered was about the, if you twist your ankle out you get more range on your kick so this a lot of swimmers are either born with a stiff ankle or a flexible ankle people with stiff ankles will have a better breaststroke kick people with um, flexible ankles might be a little weaker and i think kanita himself because he said he was a butterfly and a freestyler when he was small and latterly became a breaststroke and to be honest um, having the privilege to coach the guy he was not a good kicker so we used a lot of pulling uh, to try and improve his breaststroke and yeah but it's not about who's strong who's weak it's about improving your own kick and some people will have weak kicks but be stronger with the arms and uh, just keep on improving and as all the coaches said they it is like they are asking you guys can you see that they inviting you when on deck when we get back on deck for training everybody is waiting for that day bother your coaches and just not verbally asking for advice 
get them to film you. They have these fancy phones in their hands. They say, coach, film me. But the best time, you know what, to be filmed is when you don't know that you're being filmed. Because when I know I'm being filmed, I might actually swim the right technique. So coaches, I think we should bother swimmers and make them good actors on, on our phones and uh, use that as a, a way to improve children's techniques. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Coach. Uh, Imran, you're unmuted, right? I have two uh, questions for yes. you. Yes, can I can you? hear you. Yeah. Uh, so the first question is, why should we push off on the side? Why a side push off is more uh, better? Uh, that's a good question, guys. Uh, one of the good example I can give you: if you push off on the side, and you will have a less resistance. Good example because you are taking one shoulder down in the water, another shoulder and outside of the water. Then, as soon as you take the as soon as you take the push off and chin on the surface level, when you take the push off, and you can do the less resistance, right? Next uh, I think I give a good uh, answer for that. Which start is better, the track start or the block start? I think what they meant is both will be from the block. So it's the track start or the normal uh, feet together, feet apart in the same line start. Which one is better? Guys, uh, I like to advise the normal start. Basically, guys, I like uh, to advise all the juniors to do the normal start. Because you are, you need to more flexibility done on the block, the both feet at the same time, and you need to get more confident done. As soon as you get the confident, uh, then I suggest you to go to the track starts. If without learning that, if you go straight to the straight track starts, you will get the loss of troubleshoot. So get the basics, right? Am I right on the answer? Yes, Coach okay. Imran. I think we have come to the end of all the questions. Uh, let me first of all apologize on behalf of the panel that we had to go beyond the time. There were some technical issues and uh, due to some technical issues and because of the three, like, the three presentations we have gone beyond, I'm sure it's your bedtime or your first your dinner time for sure, unless you all have already had your dinner. So thank you everyone for being here today. Hope it was an informative session. Tomorrow we will have Mr. Shane Silva speaking on strength and conditioning another very important component for swimmers to understand what you should do outside the pool and beyond the pool, not just the pool work. So please log in, in by 6.50 so we can start on time like we have been starting all these days. Uh, have a pleasant evening and see you tomorrow. Thank you very much. Good night.